everybody this is Melanie welcome back to crafting chaos with Melanie in today's video we are going to be having a lot of fun making some shaker elements this is going to be a really fun video and it's going to kind of think outside the box a little bit um, on making shaker elements and what we're going to do with those elements okay so I love a good shaker I think that shakers add movement texture it just makes people really want to engage with what you've given them like these cards we made i made these cards the other day on a video i will link the video below but look at these look at this how cute i absolutely love this and these are beautiful i think they're very elegant especially this one i think this one has an elegant feel this has a kind of a whimsy feel now taking that a little step further i love putting them on mini albums this is a mini album that i've made actually i might finish this up this morning this is a gift for um somebody and i'm not going to open it um i don't want them to see it but let's see if i can demonstrate this so there you see that you see how pretty that is that makes you want to just pick up this book and shake it I love this. And here's one that I did um, a couple of years ago. This is an album from Genevieve Designs um, that I used, a template. And look at this, how pretty. Look, you just, you want to shake it, don't you? And look how pretty that is. Like that is just beautiful. It really takes this element of this book just just up a level and once you learn the technique of making a shaker I think that's the only shaker in this once you learn the technique of making one you can take that technique and you can apply it to other things okay which brings me to the video today now I'm a scrapbooker that is my heart that is my passion um I love taking photos. I love taking the photos of special memories, special times, photos that bring joy. Um, when I look at it, it takes me back to that moment. And I love um, displaying those through my house from scrapbooks to uh, pictures on the wall. I have so many um pictures on my wall in a scrapbook fashion I don't know what you call that kind of a shadow box feel but with scrapbooking I guess is what you call it but I have a lot of paper and Mente is one of those paper lines one of those companies I absolutely adore I have way too much of it and I have a tendency not to use it because I love it but I'm coming out of that in 2024 I have seven Mente paper packs that I am going to be using, hands down. They're going to get used this year uh, for different things. So in a lot of the Mente paper packs, it's not all of them, but in a lot of them, you have uh, this 12 by 12 sheet. Now, the good thing about Mente is you get two sheets of each, right? So you have a front and a back, okay? So you have... Uh, the option of cutting this up and still having another sheet which I really love but do you see these frames here and so often this is written memories and this is the frames from the written memories and these are actually the frames that we're using today this is the one that we're going to be demonstrating this technique with so I have that one this one is a Christmas yep merry little Christmas so you have all these frames this one is graceful. I didn't want to take it out of the paper. I probably should have. But do you see all these frames? That's a lot of frames. And when I made the cards that I made the other day, I thought, wow, I'm going to grab some of these Mente frames out. Okay. So other collections might have these. Prima might have some. Um, I know Mente is notorious for having them. They usually have them. So what you want to do or what I did is I took this and I picked out a line because I really love the back too. And we're actually going to utilize the back of these Friday. 
Um, we're going to make the shakers today. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do with those shakers on Friday. And it is different. It's something different, unexpected. Okay, so what I did is I went ahead and I cut these. Now, these are three by four. We know that this is three by four increments, right? So I cut these out. Okay, so I have these. So what you want to do is cut those out. So let's just get that to the side. So what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need shaker bits. So I just got in my stash, guys, and I just pulled out colors and things that I thought would go with this. I have these. These are sea beads. Sea beads are excellent for shaker cards or for shaker elements. And what I really like about the sea beads is they're really small and they're, you know, something really cute for it. Um, I have these little sea beads right here. Uh, in here, guys, I have so much stuff. It's ridiculous. I'm going to get, now these are beads, but now these are bigger. I'm not going to use these. I thought those were smaller. We have some sequence mixes in here. Um, I don't know that I'm going to use any of those, but I got them out. Um, these little shaker bits, you can find at Michael's. Sequent mixes, sequence mixes from companies. I have a lot of Catherine Poor. I have these gems from Close to My Heart, Loose Gems. I love these. These are kind of like a CB, but they're cut. I absolutely love these. I'm going to see if they have these because I, I need some more of these because these is primarily what we're using today. Now, I highly recommend a little dish, and I don't have a little dish. I have tried to reset my craft room a little bit. Um... Da -da 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 -da. And I don't have it. So I don't know what to do with it. So we're just going to use it out of the pack. Okay. So you're going to need these. And the key to a shaker card is foam tape. You got to have some foam. And look at this. I have to order this today. And I order the biggest one you can get. And it's, it costs, it's, it's a little expensive. It lasts a long time. I really should put the date in here to see how long this lasts me. But look, this is gone. So I've got to get on the phone today and call my mate and order me some. And then you need acetate. Okay. So this acetate I got from Cricut in the 12 by 12 sheets. And I've already cut these. Now, when I cut the acetate, I know that these frames are three by four, right? So I cut the acetate a little bit less than three by four. Okay, let's see. Let's see, did I? Yeah, you want to cut it a little bit smaller. I could probably cut it even a little bit smaller on the sides, but you want to cut it a little bit smaller than three by four so you can put these on the back of your frame. All right, so the key, the top three things you need for shaker cards or shaker elements acetate, foam adhesive, and shaker elements. These are three must-haves whenever you're doing shakers, okay? All right, so let's move on. What we're going to be using today, first of all, let me bring in my little printer here. My son got me this last year for Christmas, and I'll be honest with you, I'd never heard of it. It's called a Codex Step, I think. It's a zinc. I don't know. Codex steps, codex zinc. I'm going to link it because if you like two by three photos, this is the bomb. Um, so what I did is I got on my phone and I printed out a couple of photos that I love. These, When I look at these photos, it takes me back to a time, to a memory that brings me joy. So I printed these. And this little thing is sticker. So these little... Um, pictures right here are stickers. Okay. So we have some of these. Let me put that out of the way. Another thing these are great for are your billfold pictures. Now back in the day, and I don't even know if they do this now, I'll be honest with you. But when I was growing up, we had pictures taken at school and you always got wallet size. And then you had your little wallet of photos. This is my sister, Jennifer, her senior year. This is Maggie. So these are all the photos that I have or some that I had on my desk that I threw, you know, I've wanted to do something with, right? 
aren't these pretty? That's my brother and his wife. So I brought some of those in. So this, this idea, this little um, shaker elm we're going to make is perfect for these type of photos. Okay, so the ones I'm going to use today, I'm going to use this one, a Madison, because I adore this picture and maybe a couple of these. Okay, all right. So the first thing you want to do is cut out the middle of this. You have to make a window. Now, you can do this one or two ways. It's kind of like the frames I showed you the other day. You can get an X-Acto knife. You can cut it. You can cut it with a pair of scissors. You can use your trimmer. I'm going to use one pair of scissors today, and then we'll use a trimmer. So whenever I'm doing it with scissors, I just get in the middle, right? And I make an X. This is what I do. I make an X. It makes it easier to cut when you do that. So you go from the middle, corner to corner, right? Corner to corner. Okay, so we got that. So what I do is I bend it just a little bit, just to get in there a little bit, and I just trim it. Now, again, we've talked about my trimming skills with scissors. They're not the best, but I just want to show you that you can do it with scissors, you know? Just pull it out. Look at that. That's not bad. That is not bad. These don't have to be perfect, guys. We're not aiming for perfection here. All right. So... And then we're just going to cut the corner and I'm going to cut up this way. And I'm just following where the pattern stops and it meets the solid right there. This ain't too bad, guys. I'm not doing too bad. I think I made a joke last time about how, in my opinion, Tracy Phillips from Mindless Crafting is the queen of scissors. Like she can cut, oh my goodness, watching her with a pair of scissors. I kind of have scissor envy. All right, so just like that, you have it. And there you go. You have your little opening. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. I want to do this one. Let me see. Where's that photo of Madison? I really want to use this photo of Madison. I think this is too small for that, although it matches it perfect. I don't think that's what's going to do what I want it to do. But we are going to, we're going to cut this one out right here. One, two, three. Okay. Again, all I do is cut an X. All right. I'm telling y'all not to worry about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And it's so hard. We get in our head. Okay. By cutting this X, it just gives you a little bit more freedom to cut along the lines. I feel like, I don't know where I got this. I'm sure I saw somebody do it. Um, nine times out of ten, most things you do in crafting, you've seen somebody else do. When it comes to techniques, it's hard to come up with a new technique, you know, something really fresh and new. Props to those who do it. But I think what's so fun about YouTube is you see somebody do something, like me making the cards the other day, and from that, you kind of just bounce. You, 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 you have these moments, you're like, wow, that is such a cool technique. I'm going to do this with it. And that is what brought me to these mente frames. Okay. Now, another way of doing this, if you don't have frames, just make your own. Make your own. You can get a pair of scissors, cut you, you know, cut you a three by four uh, paper that you like. And then take a little, maybe two and a quarter by three and three quarters or something like that and cut the middle out. Okay, so there we go. That's what we're going to cut today. All right, so the first thing you want to do is put your acetate on because I'm notorious for getting the acetate. So I'm going to flip these over 
And guys, I'm going to use double stick tape because I get glue everywhere. And so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to use my double stick tape here. This is, a, I want to say a quarter of an inch. No, these are eighth. This is an eighth inch tear tape, I think. I don't know where I got this. Guys, this, this is either from Amazon or scrapbook.com. It's not scrapbook.com because it doesn't have the scrapbook.com logo on it. When you buy tear tape from scrapbook.com, it does have it on there. So this doesn't. So this must have come from Amazon. So I am just sticking this on here. And I'm going to go ahead and stick another little piece there because that seems to be a little bit bigger. Okay, so we're going to stick this on. The key to a good shaker is making sure everything that needs to be glued down is glued down good. Okay, you want it glued down. Now, I don't like using glue because I'm messy. Okay, and when I use glue, I get glue everywhere. All right, so I want to burnish these down really good. So I just want to burnish this down. And that's just, you know, the adhesive's going to stick here. Okay, now we're just going to take this tape off. Take the tape off. We're going to take, and I'm going to cut this just a little bit shorter than what I had. You know, the great thing about this, as long as this is covered, it doesn't matter how it looks. So I'm just going to take this, and I am going to, uh oh. I'm going to flip it around and it's good. Perfect. Okay, so let's go over here. Let me get my little, this is my little weeding tool that I use for my tape. All right. Uh oh, that wasn't down very good, Melanie. Okay. All right, so we got that one. Get rid of all this paper here. And take this, and we are going to come over here to the edge. To me, this feels like it went over just a little bit, but it didn't. Okay. All right, so we got this down. Now, look at this. This is the start of our shaker. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to take your foam adhesive, right? And all I have is this scotch and it's way too thick. So what I'm going to do is cut it down. Okay, so we're going to cut this down into some strips. Be really easy to do. I think you can find like an eighth wide or a quarter inch wide. And what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to, we're building a fence. Remember, I've used this term before, where we're keeping all those shaker bits inside, right? We're going to keep all those inside. So you want to butt up against that, you know? You want to make sure it's there. All right, we're going to come here and cut this again. I totally and highly recommend using strips. I do not recommend using the little squares on this one. It will take you forever. And it's just, it's just so much easier to do it this way. Now, when you're doing this, you want to make sure you butt it. I hope you see, you know, I'm making sure that it's in there really good. And we're going to do the same here. So you want to butt it, make sure that it's touching, right? And when I cut, I'm going to cut a little above and I'm going to tuck it in there. And I do that because I want to make sure that nothing's going to get out. All right. So there you go. You got your fence. 
Okay, let's do another one really quick. All right, so let's go here. And we're going to take this and make sure that's touching. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and use this piece. No sense in not using it, right? Okay. Now we just need a little bit more. Oh, I just love this. I love this technique. I love this. All right, so I'm going to take this up so I can see that. Again, making sure I'm butting up against that. And this is a little short. So we want to get in here again with another piece. And this is way too long. That's, I'm just piecing it in there. And remember... Okay, now, this is where it all comes together, right? So here we go. So let's figure out what we want to do. I know I want to use this. I love this little picture of Madison, so we're going to use Madison. And let's see here. This is a bigger one, so I'm going to go ahead and use my bigger ones on this. Let's do Maggie. Let's do Madison and Maggie. How's that? Look at that. See, these, these fit in here perfect, do they not? Now, your little um, two by threes, these right here are perfect for this one right here. All right. So the two by threes come in handy when the cutout is just a little bit smaller there. We're going to use those today. And I will probably go back and finish these up. Okay, so what are we going to do now? We are going to put the shaker elements here, right? Okay, so we're going to use some pinks. So all I'm going to do is put some pink shaker in there and some pink shaker. Oh, this is why you need a little... Ah... Uh, a little gem holder, a little bowl, a little something, something other than what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, Lordy. It's okay. It is okay. So you want to get these gems in the middle here to where they're not going to touch the foam tape. Okay. All right. So I got some of these extra. I'm not going to fool with these right now. I'm going to leave them right there. And then we're going to take these loose gems that I absolutely love. And I'm just going to put these in my hand off screen here. I love these. Now, when you're doing this, they're going to go everywhere. It's okay. They make little, like, gem shovels. And they make little spoons itty bitty spoons you can use for this i totally need to get it because guys i am in a shaker mood if i can put a shaker on it i'm doing it all right let's put some more of this in there with her okay okay maybe a little bit now what i want to do is i want to add a little bit of dark in there so i have this and i'm just going to get a few i don't need a lot Hello, I swear. See that contrast, how pretty? I just think that's so pretty. Oh, these are pretty. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, I have these beads running everywhere. Guys, this is how I craft. This is me. This is me. I wish I could tell you that, you know that I really am neat and I'm not. Let's just face it. All right, so let's take all these off. I'll take all this 
foam back off. All right. Now pay attention because this this one particular one has writing, so I'll make sure that I get it up. And this one is Madison's. So I'm going to stand up here and I'm just going to line this up. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, let's get this other one. Guys, how cute is that? All right, so let's get Maggie in here. This is Maggie's second grade picture. Okay. Okay, now this one, I messed up. See that? All right, that's okay. Now that is okay. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. All I'm going to do, I'm going to get a little sheet of paper here. I just need something to close that up, right? I just need something to, and we're going to be doing something with the back. So I'm just going to come here and I'm closing that up. It is perfectly okay that that back does not look that great right now. It's okay. It's not a big deal because we are going to take care of that in Friday's video. Okay. All right. Look how freaking adorable these are. Are you kidding me? Here's another one that I did. This is Beth and Brandon. Look at these, how pretty. All right, guys, what do you think? What do you think about these and the idea of it? Oh, I think these are just stunning. I cannot wait to show you what we're going to do with these. Come back Friday to Friday's video. And remember, if you're not a subscriber, then subscribe. What are you waiting for? If you like this video, hit the like button. And if you have crafty friends, please share. We're going to be doing a lot of, of um, crafts like this where you're taking your pictures and thinking outside of the box and using them in ways maybe that you didn't think about using. All right, guys, I hope you have a great day. Stay warm in all those northern states with all that snow, and I will see you Friday. Bye.